What's up world, King James, and we are back with another UTV movie fact. Right behind me is the same stairs that Richard Dreyfuss walked down in the movie American Graffiti. It's a classic scene. Just like we showed you earlier, the same parking lot that Richard Dreyfuss snuck up behind the police car and wrapped a cable around the axle and when the police car drove off, it ripped off the back. Like I said, these are the same stairs exactly where they filmed the movie at. And these are the windows that Richard Dreyfuss and one of the pharaohs was looking out of when they were looking at the police car. This is King James with another UTV movie fact. What's up world, King James, and we are here in beautiful Petaluma, California for the American Graffiti Car Show. I am standing here with scholarship winners, Maria Pierre. Hi. We have Lily. Lily Flores. And we have Brianna. Yeah, hey. Welcome to the show, girls. Now, these girls here just got scholarships from the American Graffiti to go to school. Tell us what you're going to go to school for. Um, I'm going to be going to San Francisco State to study film and minor in photography. Study film and a minor in photography? And Lily, what are you going to school for? Um, I'm going to Fullerton State and I intend to study music. I'm a singer. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to go to Brigham Young University and I'm going to dance there. Excellent. So are you girls local? Do you guys live here in Petaluma and uh, grew up here in Petaluma? Yeah. yeah, I moved here when I was in second grade. Nice. So tell us how you got involved. How how the American Graffiti, what is it, the 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 board members that they handpick personally select you guys? Um, we actually all applied for the scholarship through our career center at school and I guess after that they screened the process and picked us for the scholarships. So was there a group of students? Um, I know that you guys had to write an essay to to get your scholarship. Now, how many students do you think applied or wrote an essay to try to get a scholarship? Um, I'm not sure. I think most of the people who applied ended up getting scholarships, so that's really awesome. That is awesome. And we're here today. Let's see your scholarships. Throw them up, girls. There it is. There it is. This is our future, ladies and gentlemen. We definitely support all three of you guys in your future and good luck and thank you once again girls for coming on the show and special thanks to American Graffiti for providing these scholarships to our young students. We have more, keep it locked in right here.
What's up world, King James, and we are here in Petaluma, California for the seventh annual American Graffiti Car Show. I am standing here with special guest today, Clay. Clay, welcome to the show. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, standing behind us today, or sitting behind us today, is one of the original cars that was in the movie American Graffiti? Yes, it's a 1956 Ford Thunderbird that Suzanne Summers drove in the movie. We've owned it since 1964. Since 1964. So, did the producer or the director of the show or the movie come to you, and how did how did this car uh, end up in the movie? A very interesting. Uh, the gentleman was Henry Travers, who just re passed away a few years ago, was a transportation manager looking for cars in Petaluma and he spotted our sitting downtown. My wife came out of the store and it was a piece of a brown paper bag under the windshield wiper saying, if you'd like to use your car in a movie, call 415. But we thought it was a joke and we're going to throw it away. Wow. I called it and some guy answered Lucas Films. I said, okay, who's Lucas Films? And it turned out to be a subsidiary of Universal and Lucas, and that's how it got in the movie. Now, I don't know if our camera can get a shot of this, but is this original paint? Is it pretty much everything original on this car? Uh, pretty much original, yes. It's, uh, there's a couple things on it which you can tell that was in the movie that is only on this Thunderbird, which I won't say what they are, but there are a couple of items on here that it, if you look at it, you know this is the car. Nice. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure you get a lot of questions, people asking you, did you get to meet Suzanne Summers? Uh, I didn't. Uh, then, I did later on. Right then, my wife talked to her a couple of times. Downtown, we went down and watched them shoot a couple of scenes. But on the 25th anniversary, there was a show called The Lisa Show in Southern California. We got invited in and they were interviewing Suzanne for a health magazine. Nice. Uh, they called us out on the last segment and her husband come driving up in the Thunderbird. And so she, that's what we Wow. Yeah. So we have pictures with her in the Thunderbird at the Lisa Show. Nice. And do you have a couple of those pictures here? Oh, it does. Probably in the book. Yeah, there, there's the ones with the... They're the ones with at the Lisa show where we had get a shot of this. Wow. Well, Clay, we definitely do appreciate your time here today. No problem. And for our viewers that are sitting back at home, might not be familiar with American Graffiti. Could you tell them a little bit about the history and and behind it? That besides the fact that it was a movie, the reason why all these people are out here today is their appreciation for cars. Well, I guess the, the movie itself was just uh, Lucas's idea, and he was always in the car business. Henry Travers built the yellow coupe and the black Chevy for him. Uh, they found our car and used it, and it, the first year, per dollar spent, it grossed more money than any other movie. People just loved it, and they still do today. There you have it, UT viewers, UTV viewers. Clay, thank you once again for your time, and keep it locked in. We have more.
Okay, UTV viewers, we are back, and I am sitting here with Phil in his 55 Chevy, and Phil is going to bring us another American Graffiti movie fact. Phil, tell our viewers your story. Couldn't wait for American Graffiti to come out, and it came out in the movie theater at the Stam on a Friday evening. We got there real early. I had a 50 Olds Coupe. My buddy had a 57 Chevy. Took our wives. We had no kids. We were just young married hot rodders. We're sitting there in the movie eating popcorn and the previews have gone. We've seen a cartoon. They used to actually show a cartoon in those days. And uh, here the movie starts. And I'm, I'm really starting to enjoy it. And uh, my buddy leans across his wife and he goes, oh no, Phil, you're going to kill me. He goes, no, you're really going to kill me, Phil. And he hands a business card across the wives to me, and I'm trying to read it in the movie, that they're there in the dark, and, and it says George Lucas on it. And I, I said, George Lucas? Well, that, that was on the screen here a minute ago. He goes, that's right. He says, I was at working for the phone company in Walnut Creek. I took my 48 Olds down there, and I came out from this, uh, this lunch, uh, lunch shack there, and there's this guy out there, and he goes, hey, that's a nice old car. Do you know anybody else that has any old cars? He goes, yeah, why do you ask? He goes, well, we might be filming a movie up here in Northern California, and we could use some old cars. And Brian says, well, yeah, I know a bunch of guys. So he gives Brian the card. Brian puts the card in his, in his wallet. Long story short, I'm looking at this card. I go, where'd you get this card? He goes, and he tells me the story I just related to you. And I stood up and I said, yeah, I really think I am going to kill you. We could have had our cars in the movie American Graffiti. Wow. Now you tell me. <laughs> so do you believe in second chances, Phil? Well, you never know. There was actually a sequel to American Graffiti called More American Graffiti. And a lot of people still don't know that. And it talked about what those kids were all doing after they left the valley. More American Graffiti. If you haven't seen it, check it out. There you go, UTV viewers. Phil, we do appreciate your time here today, and um, hopefully next year, if we can get Lucas down here, we'll get you that second chance to get your car maybe in the new film. Wouldn't that be something? I, I understand George has been here before, kind of incognito, and he really enjoys what he sees. Takes him right back to where he grew up in Modesto, California. There you go, yep. keeping it local, keeping it local. That's right, you know that's right. Gonna, you know what they're gonna hand out in the 40th? They're going to hand out 40 ounces on the 40th anniversary here coming up. So everybody gets a 40. <laughs> For our younger viewers out there, seeing that this is a family show, <laughs> it's going to be a great show. So you're sitting back at home. Definitely, we do encourage you to come down here next year. Check these gentlemen out and their beautiful cars. I'll buy you a 40. <laughs> there you have Phil, appreciate your time today. Thank you. American Graffiti lives on 40 years later. Woo! Who's in the boulevard? Okay, UTV viewers, we have a special treat for you. Right behind me is the actual car used by Richard Dreyfuss in the movie American Graffiti. This is the vehicle that he rolled up to the radio station to see Wolfman Jack. 
he wanted to give that special note to him so he can relay it over the air to the love of his life. Or he thought it was the love of his life. This is a 1967 Centron, very rare. Now what I'd like to do is take you and show you inside the vehicle. It's going to blow your mind. Check it out. There's not too many of these vehicles still left, so like I said, this is a very special treat and we are very privileged to show you, the viewer, this exclusive.